Rotten Reviews, and today the 11th door of the 2020 Advent Calendar of Christmas Horror Movies opens. And behind it we find the 2018 movie, Lake Alice. Directed by Ben Milkinson and written by Stevie Jane Miller, there is pretty much one reason, aside from the fact that it's a Christmas horror movie and I kind of need to be getting these in here, uh, but beside that, there is one reason that I picked this movie as something that I really wanted to watch, and that was the cover art. The poster is amazing. It's awesome. It's just gruesome and dreadful and badass, and I loved it. And from the moment that I clicked play on Tubi TV, where the movie currently resides for free with ads, the one question popped into my head that I was just really fingers crossed hopeful for in, that was, will the movie match the awesomeness of the cover art? Nope, not at all. Not in the slightest. This was bad. So this movie kind of opens up with a family going out to spend the Christmas holiday at a remote cabin just on the outskirts of a small town where I guess they have a winter cabin. And already it's sounding like the most horrific circumstances possible because we have a mother, a father, and their adult daughter, and this daughter is bringing along her boyfriend, and this is his first time meeting the parents. And it's happening at a remote cabin where they're locked in, well, not locked in, but they're basically traveling a long distance to be there isolated for an indeterminate period of time. But let's just go ahead and say generously a couple of days, maybe a week. That still sounds like nightmare fuel at the very least. But then it kind of ramps up when the mother and father, everybody gets there, they unpack, they get settled, and then they need to go and run some errands. So mother and father leave their daughter and boyfriend behind, and during that time, he proposes to her. So when they come back from running their errands, keep in mind, they had only been at the cabin for a few minutes. They had known this guy for a grand total of the car ride and a minute, and now they find out they're engaged. So just social awkwardness abound. But Mike, where's the horror element? Well, that's a really good fucking question because the nature of the horror of this movie is kind of your standard home invader, slasher, what have you. But the thing of it is, that doesn't happen until over halfway through the movie. The rest of it is all set up. And I have to kind of wonder, what set up? What are they possibly doing that merits all of this setup? Because... The geography isn't really terribly well laid out as far as, you know, getting a bead on the structure of the house and the neighboring woods and so on and so forth, or the, the layout of the town. The characters that they introduce into the fold here, it, it, they're lackluster, they're minimal, they really don't contribute anything towards the plot. All they're doing is ruining the mystery by introducing them because when you have nine characters that have been introduced in the entirety of the movie, you know that there's two assailants. I wonder who the two assailants are. It becomes a Scooby-Doo process of elimination to find out who the masked person is and it just doesn't matter because there's no connection. There's no connection to the heroes. There's no connection to the victims. There's no connection to the antagonists. There's no connection to anybody because honestly, the writing really suffered. I think that's kind of where this fell down was just right from the start in pre-production, in the screenplay writing process, in the vetting process, in the multiple revisions that this should have gone through. It just was doomed to fail with the character introductions, the dialogue, and the just core nature of the movie because nothing about it was interesting. Even once it got kicked off, even if you had the patience to sit through over half the movie to watch some people get killed and it finally happened, it's pretty lackluster. The one thing that really could have saved this movie in some little tiny way would have been to have some interesting, gruesome, over-the-top kills. Something that would have elicited, uh, well, it was at least fun once it got started. But the fact of the matter is, it wasn't. That's not to say that it was all bad. There actually was a shining spot in this, and that was Peter O'Brien's portrayal of the father in the movie. And just him watching his daughter and this boyfriend and so on go through these paces, I actually thought that the performance itself, even though the dialogue and such wasn't written terribly well, the performance was 
intriguing. I actually found myself latching onto him and feeling for him as he's just trying to make the best of this fucking Christmas when all these curveballs get thrown at him. And it's like, fuck, man, I, whew, I feel you. And he's just trying to love his daughter and do the best he can. And it really does come through. So kudos on that. I want to give credit where credit's due. I don't want to just be the angry movie guy. Credit where credit's due, that was a good element of this movie. But that was honestly one of the only ones that I could possibly think of when I am trying to think of the pros to this mountain of cons that is this movie. So we have one good performance and some awesome cover art. Beyond that, I can't really say that I recommend the 2018 movie Lake Alice. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on my next review. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.